is up to prayer. We bless your name because we know you have a good thing preserved for everyone. And we thank you, Lord, because your good heart has made abundant provision, adequate provision, complete provision for every child of yours. And we thank you, Lord, because we know that whatever it is we need, we are here to receive from you, and we shall receive in Jesus' name. We know there is no need in human life, in the heart, in the spirit, in the soul, in the mind, in the body, in the family, around us, within us. There is no need which you cannot supply. And we know that all our needs you are going to supply abundantly. You will not fail any of us in Jesus' name. And we know whatever is holding our blessing. Today, you are going to deliver us from them. We are going to recover everything we have lost. All your inheritance you have given us. All the blessings you have provided for us. We are going to recover everything from the enemy in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, that as the word goes forth, we know that your word will not come back to your void. Therefore, Lord, we pray that blessings from on high, you will shower down upon everybody as we hear this word, Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let me hear a bigger, greater, amen. <clears throat> Thank you, God bless you. You can see now. We're talking about recovering our lost inheritance from the enemy. You see the enemy seeds on your inheritance. And when you don't know, you'll be roaming about and doing this and doing that. And then you'll walk and walk. You'll pray and pray. You'll move and move. And everything you do, the blessing is not there because there is an enemy with a capital E. A powerful enemy. A mighty enemy. But Jesus is greater than that enemy. He's sitting on your blessing. And today, we're going to dislodge. We're going to break the power of that enemy. And your inheritance will be yours in Jesus' name. And there are many examples in the Bible, there are many examples in our day of people that have inheritance, of people that have blessing, of people that have the goodness of God showered upon them, but because there is a blockage, because there's an enemy that is sitting on that blessing, they're not able to realize what they, what they ought to realize. That's the reason we're here today for you to discover and for you to recover. And you to get everything that you have lost to the enemy. The enemy is powerless. The enemy is weak. And the enemies are destroyed. Even in your life from this very moment in Jesus' name. Fathers leave inheritance for their children. What inheritance has the Heavenly Father given us? Much, much, much more than we need, much more than we will ever desire. <clears throat> Adequate supply. 
abundant supply, sufficient supply. For our present and future needs, they have been provided by the Lord, by our Father who is in heaven. More than enough, he has provided for you, he has provided for me. The question is, why then are we not enjoying them? Are there enemies depriving us of enjoying a full blessing, a full inheritance? God has promised to restore all our inheritance to us, assuring you, your inheritance will be restored unto you. Hey, look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 21. <clears throat> it tells us, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. It says, You shouldn't fear. How mighty the enemy might be, what power the enemy may have, what strategies the enemies may have. It says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, because the Lord has decided that He will do a great thing. And when the Lord decides he will do great things, who can hinder him? Not even your enemy. <laughs> and then he tells us from verse 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, and a canker worm, and a caterpillar, and a palmer worms, my great army which I sent among you. He's describing all the enemies that have destroyed the blessings of the people of God, the blessings of the people of Israel, and he calls them the locusts, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. He says, my great army, my great army, which I sent among you in times of sin, in the times of backsliding, in the times of rebellion, in the times when they went away from the Lord. The Lord sent and the Lord permitted all these enemies to come into them and to destroy their inheritance. And now he says in this verse 25, I will restore to you. I will restore to you. I'll give back to you everything you've lost all through those years when those enemies took away your inheritance and your blessing. <clears throat> When he says, I will restore, it means that everything you have everything lost, he will return everything to you. He will restore everything to you. And see what he says in verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously, wonderfully with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. I'm declaring to you the come where you will get everything you ought to have and you will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. See what it says when it says, you will eat in plenty. You will be satisfied. You will praise the name of the Lord your God. And because he will deal with you wondrously, wonderfully. And then it says, when you've got all your property back, when you've got all your inheritance back, when you've got all your blessings back, all your enemies that were thinking you are going to be ashamed, you are going to be confounded, you are going to be confused, you are going to be poor, you are going to be so distressed, and then you'll even not know what to do. They will be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. Your enemies will be ashamed in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I 
And then he says in verse 27, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people, once again, he repeats it, shall never, 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 never be ashamed. Obviously, then as you look at the scriptures, as you look at the promises of God can, that cannot fail, as you look at the promises we're standing upon, the promises are sure, the promises are certain that He will give you all the provision you have lost to the enemy, all the inheritance you have lost to the enemy, and then when you've got everything, when you've got everything, your laugh, your job, your, your rejoice, begin to count your blessings. See, I got this, see, I got this, see, I got that. Then you'll be rejoicing. And your enemies will put their fingers in the mouth and say, What? He's got everything was standing upon before, sitting on before. We didn't know he would be able to have all these things. And then they'll become ashamed and they will go away in shame. And you will go on rejoicing. You will go on rejoicing. You will go on rejoicing. Because great and abundant will be the blessings of God in your life in Jesus name. <clears throat> there are three points we're going to consider. Number one, reckon. Number two, recognize. Number two is that you recover. Number one, you recognizing the exchange of a sufficient inheritance. You are recognizing the exchange of your sufficient inheritance. Inheritance that's abundant, inheritance adequate, it's an inheritance that is sufficient for all your needs within, without, in the family, and your place of work, everywhere you are, reckon, reckoning the exchange of a sufficient inheritance. Now, number two, recognizing the enemy who seized our inheritance. We recognize him. We look at him on the face, eyeball to eyeball. We say, ah, ah, so you are the one sitting on my inheritance. And then we bring out our authority, the authority in the name of Jesus, the power in the Holy Ghost. And then we give a command and we destabilize that enemy but in Jesus' name. Then number three, recovering and enjoying all our seized inheritance. I'm telling you, something good is coming your way to recover. And you'll begin to enjoy all your inheritance that had been seized before. I'm rejoicing with you already because I see it already. I see it. I say it. I seize it. And it's there. I said it's there. I said it's there. Recovering and enjoying all our seized inheritance. Number one, reckoning the extent of a sufficient inheritance. Because if we do not know how much we have, how shall we know if part of that inheritance has been taken away? If that part of that inheritance has been lost? If part of that inheritance has been stolen away from us? And as the reason want to reckon for us, the extent of a sufficient inheritance.
Each believer has much. But many believers do not know how much they have. How much do you have? How much inheritance do you have? How many blessings are provided for you? Much more than you have ever enjoyed. All things you'll ever need. All things you'll ever desire. For your soul, for your spirit, for your body, for your family, for your work, for your profession, for your life now here, and for your life there in eternity. All things, literally, all things. The number one thing for you to do, the number one thing for you to hold on to is to reckon, is to reckon, is to reckon the extent of your sufficient inheritance. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You see, it says, he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him that worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And then in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that she may know what is the what is the hope of his calling? And what riches, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Uh, you see the word inheritance in those verses of scripture. And then you see in verse 3, it, the word all. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all, all, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Begin to reckon the extent of your inheritance that is sufficient and abundant. And then in Colossians chapter 1, I'm reading there from verse 12. It says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet suitable feet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He's made us partakers of the inheritance. You know, if in your life there is something missing, in your life there is something that is lacking, in your life there is something causing your sorrow, causing your concern, why don't I have this, why don't I have this, why don't I have this, it's not a problem with the promise of God, it's not a problem with the inheritance, you have everything virtually, only that there is an enemy that is sitting on that thing, that's why I want to make a revelation of it today, and when the revelation comes to you today, you will defeat your enemy. I said you will defeat your enemy. And everything that you have been losing, you look at everything, you gather everything back, you recover everything to yourself, and then there will be joy, joy, joy in your life. If And then in verse 13 it says, who has delivered us? Not that he will deliver us. Not that maybe he's thinking about delivering us. He has delivered us already. Why are we not enjoying the deliverance? 
Why not enjoying? Why are we not enjoying the provision who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32, I want to show you that uh, the Bible recognizes you have an inheritance, you have much that you need to claim, and you need to reckon that, recognize that today. Acts, chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the watch of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Uh, now, pay attention now. Look up here. You know, when you get saved, you're a child of God. But I want you to see in your mind, look at a building in your mind. And look at the ground floor. And look at the next floor. And look at another floor again. When you get born again, you enter into the ground floor. And there are some things you have there. There are some inheritance you have there. And there are some blessings you have there. There are some good, good things you have there. When you are born again, you are a child of God. Your sins are forgiven. You are rejoicing. You are a member of the family of God. In that first level, there is, there is. And there are many blessings and inheritance you have in that first floor, in that ground floor. But as you are moving on in the Lord, and you climb up higher ground, higher ground, higher ground, and you climb up to the next floor, and you get sanctified, and you get purified, and you get holy, and then your heart, the Adamic nature is taken away, and self is crushed, and you are totally submissive to the Lord, totally surrendered to the Lord, and you get to that next floor, there is a kind of inheritance you have in that sanctification floor. In that sanctification stage that you did not have when you were just born again. That's why it says now, brethren, I commend you to the word of God. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you and to give you and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. There are some people, the enemy cheats them. And the enemy makes them not to believe sanctification, not to accept sanctification, not to appropriate sanctification, not to embrace sanctification, not to experience sanctification. And there are some blessings you will never have. There are some inheritance you will never have. There are some good, good things you will never have. And you allow the enemy to sit on those blessings because you don't get to the level, you don't get to the floor that has a sanctification and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. That's the method of the enemy to say, don't worry about that holiness. Don't worry about that purity of heart. Don't worry about that sanctification. Don't worry about all that experience. Just stay here. He wants to cheat you. He wants to stay on your blessing. He wants to see to your blessing. That's why I tell you not to worry about sanctification, about holiness. But when you get to that level, and then you come out into the open ground, and you look at all the inheritance, and the Lord is saying, 
All this is yours now. Because you come to this stage, that's why you will tell the Lord today, if you have been born again, that I need to go forward. I need to go to that second floor where that sanctification is, the second work of grace. And when that's done in your heart, I'm telling you, the blessings you will have, you'll even say, this is not, this is not, you cannot bear them all, you cannot carry them all. It will be so in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 26 verse 18. It says, Acts 26 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from, the, from darkness to light and the, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, comma, not just that, not stopping at that, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that's in me. We're looking at how sufficient is our inheritance, how adequate is our inheritance, how abundant is our inheritance. In Second Peter chapter one, reading verses three and four. Second Peter chapter one, verses three and four. According as his divine power has given unto us. All things. Second Peter chapter one, verse three. He said, according as his divine power, he has given us all things. Hey, can you see that? Can you picture that? Can you imagine that? He has given us, he has given us Almighty God in His abundance. Almighty God in His love. Almighty God in His thinking about us. Almighty God as a father in the spiritual family. He's thinking about every member of the family and according, according as His divine power. The power that has no limit. The power that has no gauge. He has given unto us all things. And then he tells us he has given us all things pertaining to life, number one. And then all things pertaining to godliness. Wonderful God. Merciful God. A loving God. A God that loves us so much. And see what he has given us. It says all things. It says don't put any limit on it. And don't put any gauge in it. Because he's giving us, he's giving us, he's giving us all things. All things, number one, pertaining to life. Your physical life. Your natural life. Your family life. Your domestic life. Your social life. Your professional life. All things pertaining to life. The life we live over here now. All the abundance that we need. The prosperity that we need, the supply that we need to be able to meet all our needs is giving us all things pertaining to life and then on the spiritual side is giving us all things pertaining to godliness that's where you find righteousness, that's where you find holiness, that's where you find sanctification, that's where you find the abundant grace of God to be able to overcome every temptation is giving us all things pertaining to life all things pertaining to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. And then in verse 4 it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, 
that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Do you see what the Lord is saying here? He's giving us exceeding great, exceeding great, exceeding great, exceeding great and precious promises. Look at the promises of God. Look at the provision of God. And look at the power of God that's unlimited, that is able to give you everything you will ever desire, everything you will ever need. Because it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great, and exceeding precious promises that by these promises you become partakers it becomes yours you become partakers of all the things he has given even his own divine nature having escaped having escaped having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lost It says all things, all things, all things. In Romans chapter 8, I'm reading verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It, it tells us here, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely, freely, freely give us all things? As you look at the promises of God, as you look at the provision of God, and you reckon the exchange of your sufficient inheritance, you will know there is nothing missing. It's giving everything. Salvation is there. Sanctification is there. Holy Ghost baptism is there. Healing is there. Deliverance is there. Progress is there. Promotion is there. And success is there. Everything you can ever imagine, it says, look at that sentence in verse 32, as it says, he that spared not his own son, but he delivered him all for us all. How shall he not? How shall he not? How shall he not with him with Christ also freely give us all things. The question is, why is it? Believers, children of God, do not enjoy all these things we have seen in the Word of God. Let's make it direct. Let's make, let's make it particular. Why is it you have not enjoyed all these provisions we have read about for life and for godliness? Because there is an enemy that has blindfolded you. Because there's an enemy that has planned secretly that he doesn't want you to have. All your inheritance and all your blessing. I will remove the cutting today and show you the face of that enemy. And then you say, ah, ah. Because once you know your enemy, the battle is half won. All you need after recognizing that enemy is to say, now I know you. It's not that God cannot meet my need. It's not that God cannot provide for me. Uh -huh. You are there. And then you bring out the sword of the spirit. Then you bring out the word of authority and power. Then you bring out the name of Jesus. This day, you conquer that enemy. This day, you conquer that one sitting on your inheritance. I rejoice with you because from this hour, things will never remain the same in your life in Jesus' name. In Lamentation chapter 5, I'm reading Lamentation chapter 5 from verse 2. Lamentation chapter 5, reading from verse 2. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, 
our houses to aliens. In verse 3, we are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are widow, widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under the persecution we labor and we have no rest. The people of Israel here, they recognized that there was an enemy sitting on their inheritance. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. On the side of the Lord, he wants to provide for you. On the side of the Lord, he wants to meet all your need. But there is an enemy. There is a stranger that shouldn't have any authority over your life. But because of your ignorance, he has been given a chance to oppress you. And to take your inheritance away. And I come this day. That if you, are not, if you are not powerful yourself to be able to drive the enemy away from your inheritance, I come to support you. I come to sustain you. I come to lift you up. I come to tell you, come on, join your hand with me. You and I together will drive away that enemy. In John chapter 10 verse 10. John 10 verse 10 The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The Lord was talking about Satan, the arch enemy, the great enemy. The enemy of every believer, the enemy of the unbeliever, the enemy of the saint, the enemy of the sinner, the enemy of the church, the enemy of the world. And it says when that enemy comes, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. And uh, 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 sometimes, sometimes he will blindfold us, sometimes he will deceive us. Instead of our concentrating on him and fighting against him and knocking off his hand so that we can get our inheritance. It makes us to use all our wisdom, all our all our uh, natural senses, common sense, or everything we have to fight our neighbor, to fight this and to fight that and to fight that, and the devil and the enemy that is sitting on our inheritance, it does not allow us to see to recognize he is the one doing it. We don't fight him. He keeps us sitting on our inheritance, and we are busy with all the other battles that mean nothing. And Jesus Christ came to reveal the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And then in verse 10, he says, but I am calm, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus will defeat the enemy for you today. And then, all that you need to have, the life, and the life that is more abundant, it is yours, Jesus' name. Uh, you need to recognize, you need to recognize the enemy who has seized your inheritance. See the way he does it. See how he moves. In Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. I'm reading from the latter part of verse 12. It says, so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. 
And then in verse 13, and there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their, in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Serbians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain thy servants with the edge of the sword. I only am escaped to tell thee. see that kind of calamity, you will not know it was an enemy that didn't appreciate how righteous Job was, how perfect Job was, how holy Job was, how favored Job was, how blessed Job was, and then he was uh, saying, well, he's doing that because of this, because of this, and eventually he went forth from the presence of the Lord, and then all these, all these things that Job had, everything was destroyed in one day. It's an enemy. This day, we're going to make you see the face of that enemy, and we're going to conquer that enemy. In verse 16, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God. They said, The fire of God is actually of Satan, is falling from heaven and has burnt up thy sheep, the sheep and his servants, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. When he was just speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, they have slain the servants of the edge of the sword. I only am escaped to tell thee. In verse 18, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating, and they were drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped to tell thee. you see here all the calamities that happened, the loss of the children of Job, the loss of the property of Job, the fire that came down, all those things were not accidental. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The loss of your children, the loss of your business, the loss of your property, the loss that you have sustained in your life. How do you think that those things happen? It's an enemy that has done that. Conquer that enemy with Christ on your behalf in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Luke 13, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And then in verse 16, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan as bound, whom Satan has bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. The 
bondage was from Satan. The captivity was from Satan. The loss of your freedom. The loss of your liberty. The loss of your health. The loss of your strength. The loss of your natural talents. All that you had before, that you could use in your business, could use in your family, could use any way you want, that will make you the man, that will make you the woman, that will make you the boy, that will make you the girl, that the Lord has intended, that the Lord has planned. You lost everything. It's the enemy. It's the devil. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. And you will discover, you will discover this very day, you are an overcomer already in Jesus' name. And so you see that this inheritance that you have lost, that it's not just a natural thing, it's an enemy that has done this. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 38. Matthew chapter 21 verse 38. But when the husband man saw the son, he said among themselves, this is the heir. This is the one to inherit all this is calm. Let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. When you are born again, you become a child of God. The devil recognizes the inheritance you have, the blessing you have. If he can do it, he might get rid of you so that he can seize on that inheritance. And if he cannot kill you, if he cannot destroy you completely, then he will sit on the inheritance so you will not enjoy there. And we refuse to allow the devil to sit permanently in your lifetime upon your possession to sit on the inheritance you have. This is the very day we come in an aggressive manner against that thief, against that enemy that is sitting on your inheritance. I, I, I'm showing you a verse of scripture now. You need to mark this in your Bible. How essential and important this verse is for you. In, in Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 14. Have you opened it? Let me hear you this important. Have you opened the verse? Jeremiah 12 verse 14. Thus says the Lord, against, against all thine, all mine evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. God will take you from the midst of the enemy. He will transfer you to a territory where the enemy might see you. He will not be able to touch you. You will be like the corn inside a transparent bottle that the hen will be looking at and will say, huh, if I can get this in. And then he will strike on that bottle. He will never be able to get the corn inside. He will only hurt himself. From this day, the Lord is going to transfer you into the territory that is surrounded by a wall of fire. And the enemy will not be able to touch you anymore. You will carry your inheritance. I said you will carry your inheritance. You will carry your inheritance. And when you carry your inheritance, you take it and you enjoy that inheritance. And the enemies, the enemies, they will regret forever on, on your behalf. Because today is a glorious day. A great day for you. It shall be so in Jesus' name.
In 1 Samuel chapter 30, I'm reading to you from verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 30, I'm reading from verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then in verse 4, it tells us, Then David and his people, that were with him, lifted up their voice, and they wept until they had no more power to weep. David and the people around him, they lost the inheritance that the Lord had given them. Their property, their wives, their children, everything that their hearts desired, they lost everything to the enemy and they began to cry and they began to weep. If you are weeping this morning because of everything you have lost, you look at this opportunity, your life is lost. At this privilege is lost. At this position is lost. At this provision is lost. Everything that you desired before, you look at everything, everything is gone and you are weeping. Wipe away your tears. This very day will get back those inheritance. In the six, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son, every man for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Encourage yourself in the Lord. In a few minutes, when the prayer begins, you will discover. You will discover everything you are crying about. Everything you are weeping about. Everything you are mourning about. Everything you are going about to see. Everything is gone. Everything is lost. I'll never get anything. Cover everything in Jesus' name. In verse 8, it says, David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely, for thou shalt surely overtake them. We will overtake the enemy today. We will overtake the enemy today. And will, without fail, without fail, without fail, recover all. Then in verse 19 it says, And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they, had not, that they had taken. David recovered all. David recovered all. And it's the son of David, his name is Jesus Christ, he has recovered all for you. And what Christ has recovered for you. Everything. David recovered all. And the son of David, the Lord Jesus Christ, has recovered all for you. Then in John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. The Lord has come, so that you will have everything pertaining to life. And you'll have it more abundantly. 
We looked at number one, recognizing the extent of our sufficient inheritance. We have seen number two, recognizing the enemy who seized our inheritance. Now the great moment of your life. Now the joyful moment of your life. Now the exciting time of your life. Recovering and enjoying all our seized inheritance. Recovering and enjoying all our seized inheritance. I'm looking at Psalm 37 and in verse 17. Psalm 37, I'm looking at verse 17, 37, 17. It says, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. Let me hear an amen. amen. The arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. In verse 18, it says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Their inheritance shall not be terminated. Their inheritance shall not be taken away from them. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Then in verse 19, it says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the evil time, in the time of famine, in the time of scarcity, in the time of conflicts, in the times of problems, it says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. In Psalm 47, O oh, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us. Sitting on your inheritance, it shall subdue those people under us and the nations under our feet. Then the consequence and the result of it is in verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. He tells us in that verse 4 that he shall choose our inheritance for us. That is, he will reclaim, he will recover, he will have again all our inheritance for us. And then he says, the excellency of Jacob, because he loved Jacob. He loved his people, therefore, everything you have lost, anything pertaining to life, anything pertaining to godliness, he will cover, he will choose, he will bring back, he will restore all our inheritance for us. Do it in Jesus' name. of God is coming your way as your cage is open and your prison bars are destroyed and then God opens the treasure house and all your inheritance is given unto you you grab them you see them already you say them out you proclaim them and you seize them it is mine and then you are able to enjoy them it will be yours in Jesus name Look at this promise in Ezekiel chapter 46, and I'm reading from verse 18. It says, Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression. The devil has oppressed you. The enemy has oppressed you. And what rightfully belongs to you, that prince, the prince of the power of the air, has taken that inheritance away from you. But there's a declaration. There's a proclamation that that prince shall not be permitted to take the people's inheritance by oppression. That's why we come to authority over that prince of the power of the air. For all the inheritance you have lost, for everything to come back to you, it's coming back. 
I said it's coming back. I said it's coming back. And you're going to have them today in Jesus' name. And you see the fullness of this promise, moreover, 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 the, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance of oppression to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his son's inheritance out of his possession, that my people shall not be scattered every man from his possession, that the people of God will not be driven away. That the people of God will not be scattered from their possession. The Lord is not happy that somebody, somebody, whether a demonic force, whether a satanic power, whether a human agent, that somebody has driven you away from your inheritance. The Lord is angry with your enemy. The Lord is angry with your oppressors. Authority here to destroy all those powers of darkness and to restore all your inheritance unto you. And it is done in Jesus' name. There's a wonderful moment for you right now. I said, there's a wonderful moment for you right now. Let me remind you again, you see it, you say it, and you seize it. It's yours. You are going to have it. Because today, the Lord is going to defeat your enemy. And we're going to pray. Don't, don't pray yet. Don't try stop yet. And as we pray today, and you imagine everything that you have lost, everything that you have lost, one by one, one by one, you are going to recover everything. I declare that you will not miss God's blessing. They are not saying that has eluded you, that you have lost for a long time. You have been asking for a long time. You have been praying for a long time. And you never got them. I declare to you that you will have them in Jesus' name. What the thief has taken away from you. What the enemy has taken away from you. Listen to this. At this very moment, a moment of power, a moment of authority, a moment when we call on the name of Jesus who said, I am calm, that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. It's at this very moment, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not when you get back to your location. This very moment... It's when we defeat that enemy and we take back all your inheritance from the enemy. And I declare the enemy shall have no more power to siege on your inheritance anymore from now. Till you see Jesus face to face, you will enjoy your inheritance. Isaiah chapter 65. Beautiful, wonderful verse. Isaiah chapter 65. I'm reading from verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. I need an amen here now. I need an amen here. I need a good, good, good amen here. That's you, children of God, people of God. Uh -uh. How long we labor and we labor into their pocket. How long we build and it's like we build for them. How long we build and we cannot stay in that house. How long that we serve something and we cannot enjoy that thing. An enemy then will come and take the sin away from us. How long we are children, we cannot enjoy the children. How long we are married and we cannot enjoy the wife. How long we get married, we cannot enjoy the husband. How long we have any, we labor for something, we sweat for something. And we cannot enjoy what we have sweated for today. I declare that enemy that can be so wicked that will not allow you to enjoy the work of your hand. It's your right. It's your marriage. It's what you labored for. 
It's the promise of God for you. It's the provision of God for you that there will be an enemy somewhere that will see it on your inheritance on what belongs to you, not from today. I said not from today. Thou shalt not build an another in habit. Give me that amen again. They, thou, they shall not plant and another eat. Give me another amen. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Then in verse 23, they shall not labor in vain. I'm waiting for the amen. You will not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. <laughs> when somebody does not have car, trouble. When he has car, trouble. He doesn't have children, trouble. He has children, trouble. He doesn't have certificate, trouble. He has certificate, trouble. He doesn't have any of the good things of life. Enemies are pursuing him, and he has nothing. And when he has everything, enemies are pursuing him. Why? From today, it's taught. It's in verse 24. Get ready. The enemy is about to come to shame. Get ready. We're about to, to have all that we have. To possess all our inheritance. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Before they call. Before they call, I will answer. 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 And while they are yet speaking, while they are just opening their mouth and say, I need, I need, I need, before they complete the sentence, I will hear from heaven. Why don't you rise up? Because it's the time for you now to possess your inheritance. It's the time for you now to drive away the enemy. Drive away the enemy. Drive away the enemy and possess your inheritance. The time has come. The time has come. The time has come. When you will open your mouth and you will tell the Lord everything you have lost, everything you have lost to the enemy. The Lord wants to give everything back to you now. While they are yet praying, they are still speaking, I will answer. Why should you continue suffering? You have been working hard and there is somebody in the corner somewhere a witch, a wizard somewhere, a familiar spirit somewhere, a demon somewhere, a cause, a yoke somewhere, a human being somewhere, a lion, a bear somewhere. What's his name? Where's he coming from? An enemy somewhere that will not allow you to enjoy the work of your hand, that will not allow you to possess your inheritance. And has been sitting, has been sitting upon your healing, upon your deliverance, upon the provision, upon all that the Lord has provided for you. Why? Today we overcome and destroy the powers of that enemy in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and get your inheritance back. You have children, you cannot enjoy them. You have a wife, you cannot enjoy the wife. You have a husband, you cannot enjoy the husband. You have a job, you cannot enjoy the provision. You have certificates, you cannot enjoy it. You have vehicle, you cannot enjoy it. You have property, you cannot enjoy it. You have friends and there's still disappointment. You are born again and yet you are suffering. Who is sitting on your inheritance? Who is sitting on your inheritance? Get them out of that place and tell them to get up and get away from your inheritance. The Lord has told you, while you are yet speaking, while you are yet speaking, 
while you are yet speaking, the Lord says, He will hear. Are you born again? If you are born again, don't let the enemy see to your inheritance. It's yours. Rise up and claim what belongs to you. Don't let anybody take that healing away from you. It's yours. That deliverance, it's yours. You don't have to remain sick. You don't have to remain in oppression. Healing is your inheritance. Deliverance is your inheritance. Authority is your inheritance. Dominion is your inheritance. Let that enemy get off from that place and enjoy your inheritance. Open your mouth and pray, this is your chance. Don't let the devil cheat you, don't let the devil cheat you, this is your chance. Get that enemy off your inheritance. Get that enemy off your inheritance. Don't allow the enemy to blindfold you, to fool you, to deceive you. Get that enemy off your inheritance. Speak the word of authority. If you are a child of God, speak like a child of God. If you are a child of God, command like a child of God. If you are a child of God, take authority like a child of God. Your inheritance is yours. Don't let anybody cheat you or drive you out of it. What God has provided for you. What God has given to you. What you have enjoyed before, but now he's taken away from you. Be authoritative about it. Be bold about it. Be courageous about it. The enemy cannot sit for long on that inheritance. The enemy cannot sit for long on that inheritance. That house you built, somebody is taken away from you. That land you bought, somebody is taken away from you. That possession that is just somebody is taking away from you. Take your authority now and speak with boldness. Tell that enemy, get out of my inheritance. I repossess my inheritance. And sinner salvation is your inheritance. Jesus died for everyone so that you can have forgiveness. That forgiveness. That reconciliation with God, that cleansing of the blood of Jesus is your inheritance. Claim it right now. Jesus died for you that you might be saved. Confess your sins and forsake them. If we forsake our sins, if we confess our sins, He is just, He is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He that covereth the sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That mercy is your inheritance once you confess and once you, once you, once you forsake your sin. Claim it, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the salvation of God. Are you married or you want to, you just want to get married? You are a child of God, you should have a good wife. It's your inheritance. You are a child of God, you should have a good husband. It's your inheritance. If you're married and you're children of God, you should have children. It's your inheritance. You've gone to school, you have certificate, you should have a job. It's your inheritance. You are trading, you are selling, you should have profit. It's your inheritance. Don't let anybody take your inheritance from you. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground and claim, reclaim, recover all your inheritance.
Don't forget anything. Don't forget anything. Don't forget any part of your inheritance the enemy has been sitting on. Speak it out. Proclaim it. Get it back from the enemy. In Jesus' name we pray. Children of God, people of God, I want to hear your amen. I said, in Jesus' name we pray. We have got back our inheritance. Let all the strangers know we have got back our inheritance. Let them know we have got our children back. Let them know we've got our wives back. Let them know we've got our husbands back. Let them know we've got our healing back. Let them know the joy of the Lord is back. Let them know it's a day of celebration for us. Let them know, let them know, let them know, let them know. Our land they're sitting upon. Our houses that they are staying here without paying rent. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Everything that the Lord has given us that they were sitting on. We have we have gotten everything back. We have gotten everything back. Lord of blessing. Lord of blessing. Lord of blessing. Lord of blessing. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. Let them know. Let them hear. Let them no, we have got it back in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow the eyes closed. As, I joy, as there is joy for the people of God. Are you there? You don't know this joy. Let's bow the eyes closed. If you have not been forgiven your sin. And the devil is using the whip of your guilt and your condemnation to tie you down there. He's using the cord of your sin to tie you down and to say, you cannot claim your blessing because I have authority over your life. God will forgive you. And that salvation, you look at the devil eyeball to eyeball. You order him, command him to get off your blessing. And so, if you need this forgiveness, you have been born again. And you know that there's condemnation of sin in your heart. Forgiveness is your inheritance. Salvation is your inheritance. Freedom from sin, victory over sin is your inheritance. Just raise up your hand where you are. I'll be praying with you. God bless you as you do that. Yes, I see your hand. God bless you as you do that. Your inheritance of forgiveness and salvation you are going to get right now. Well, with the grace, the grace to live a victorious life, you are going to get it right now. Just keep up your hand. I want our ushers and our leaders to give them decisions, leaves. This is a great moment in their lives. As you raise up your hand, just quietly confess, Lord, I know that I've been a sinner. And my sin has bound me like a chain, unbreakable chain. But today I hear that forgiveness is my inheritance. And that you have provided forgiveness for me through Jesus on the cross of Calvary. I come to receive that forgiveness. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. And I know that Satan cannot see it on this forgiveness. It's mine. My sins are forgiven. I accept and I believe. That right now all my sins are taken away. Thank you, Lord. Your salvation is mine now. I receive. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for what you have done. We're asking, O oh Lord, that this inheritance of forgiveness and salvation that you have given to every repentant sinner to be theirs, and nothing will take the assurance of it away from their hearts. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the time has come for all the other things you have lost to be given back to you. Don't let the devil cheat you now. Because when you want to get what actually belongs to you, and then the devil sends one of his messengers, they are calling you, they are calling you, come over here. And then before you come back, they have distributed the inheritance to those who want them. And then you say, where is mine? Where is mine? Then they say, you wait till next time. You are getting it now. And you are getting it now. And God will put a testimony in your mouth. And when you get back home, your house that you built, that those people are staying, they will not pay house rent. They will be looking for you and rushing after you to, please, please, take your money, take your money. I will not keep your money again. All your money will come back to you in Jesus' name. That woman, your wife, that you've been praying about, she packed away and you have been begging her. You will not beg her now. She'll come and beg. She'll come back home. And that husband that has been bluffing you, that is saying you, I, I have other women I'm going to marry and I will not see your face again. When you get back home, just, you know, wash yourself, make your hair neat and dress well because that man is coming. He will beg and come back. And of course, your healing, you are getting it now. Your deliverance, you are getting it now. All your inheritance, you are getting it now in Jesus' name. Are you ready? If you are claiming your inheritance, if it's yours right now, you raise up your hand, I'm a candidate. Everything I lost, I'm getting now. Raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this glorious privilege. We thank you because today is a day of restoration. It's a day of recovery. All our inheritance will be ours in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that all the people that have lost their health, and there is no health at all, and there is no strength at all, every sickness in your body, every infirmity in your body, I command that sickness, I command that infirmity, come out in Jesus' name. All the skin disease in your body, dry up right now, be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
the poison or the virus in your blood system. I command your blood system to be purified right now. That every disease, every pain, every suffering inside your blood, I, co I command that everything will be poured and flushed out, be healed in Jesus' name. All the swelling in your body, in your tummy, on your neck, in your head, on the head of that child, or at the back, I command right now, all that swelling will come down. All that swelling will get away. All that swelling will vanish away. Like the air in the balloon that has gone away, I command everything becomes normal right now in Jesus' name. That pile in your body, I command that pile be removed right now. Be removed right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. All day, all the affliction of the devil will look like they're using pain on your leg, on the sole of your feet, in the different parts of your head, or of your body. And that person that will be pulling off your own air by yourself, all that insanity, all that infirmity, and all that affliction, I command everything will vanish away right now, be healed and be delivered in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every person that has any form of sickness, any kind of deformity, eyes blind, ears dead, legs paralyzed. I pray that your power will come upon them right now. Those blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears be opened in Jesus' name. And those paralyzed hands and withered hands and withered legs, I command the power of God to come upon your legs and to come upon your hands right now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. The yoke and the curse in any life, I break that yoke. I remove that curse. Rise up and be free in Jesus' name. Any work of the devil, as we have been given the promise for this purpose, for this reason, that the Son of God, his name is Jesus was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I pray that every work of the devil, every activity of the devil, every curse of the devil, every yoke of the devil, everything be broken right now, everything be destroyed right now on every boy, on every girl, on every man, on every woman, on every believer, every invitee here, the works of the devil in your life, the works of the devil in your body, the works of the devil in your, in your family, everything be destroyed right now in Jesus' name. And every inheritance of the people of God are blessed. I pray, Lord, right now, restore it back to them in Jesus' name. Your wife is giving back to you fully, completely, in Jesus' name. 
your husbands are restored to you in Jesus' name. Your house, your land, your property that have been taken away by the enemy. We have, we have received them. We have taken them back from the enemy. We give everything back to you. Receive them in Jesus' name. The children you have been dreaming about, but you have never seen the children in reality. We get the children, we drive the enemy away from them. We break the yoke of the enemy. Receive your children, it's your inheritance. Receive them in Jesus' name. Progress, promotion, prosperity is given to you now. It's your inheritance. It's your right. Receive that prosperity in Jesus' name. Every good, good thing that you opened your mouth and told the Lord that, Lord, this is what I need, this is what I need, this is what I need, that you opened your mouth yesterday, this morning, or even before, that you have opened your mouth and told the Lord, it's your inheritance, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Possess your possession in Jesus' name. And from today, you will enjoy everything you have got. No enemy will take your right from you. No enemy will take your inheritance from you. The Lord has come that you may have life and love it more abundantly. It's yours. It's yours. And you are an overcomer. And you will enjoy all the work of your hand, all your inheritance. Because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. Let me hear. Let God hear. Let Satan hear. Let your friends hear. Let the enemy hear. Let us know you are rejoicing. Let us know you are celebrating. Everybody say, Amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have the victory, victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, when I pray in the name of Jesus, tell me who has the power to oppose of mighty Jesus I have the victory you have the victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I have the victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When I pray in the name of Jesus, tell me. In the name of mighty Jesus, you have the victory. We have the victory. Of Jesus. I have the victory. Hallelujah. When we pray in the name of Jesus.